السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ گڈ ڈے ڈاکٹر ذاکر نائک مائی نیم از عبد الحفیظ فرام نائجیریا آئی ایم اے اسٹوڈنٹ ٹوڈے مسلم اینڈ نان مسلمس آل فالو واٹ از نون ایز کانسٹیٹیوشن اینڈ وی آل نو دیٹ کانسٹیٹیوشن از اے بک رٹن بائی ہیومن بینگس مسلمس نان مسلمس الائک انڈیکیٹنگ دیٹ دا کانسٹیٹیوشن از ناٹ فرام اللہ دی آل مائی ٹی and all countries rule and judge people with the constitution and they say it is the supreme law of the land instead of sharia and that any law against the constitution is null and void including sharia and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran in surah al-maida chapter 5 verse 45 and whosoever does not judge by that which allah has revealed such as alimun such a wrong doers so i would like to hear dr zakir nice point of view regarding muslims following constitution and also i want to know if it's against chapter 5 verse 45 may allah make our deen prevail over all other religions jazakallah khairan the question posed is that today muslim the non muslim the like they follow the constitution and we know that the constitution is written by human beings whether the muslims or non muslims and they consider the constitution to be something on the top and all the countries they follow the constitution even if it goes against the sharia and and the quran clearly states in surah maida chapter 5 verse number 44 that you have to judge by what allah has commanded and anyone who doesn't follow the commandment of allah and does not judge according to the ruling of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are the wrong doers so what is my comment on the constitution according to me the great quran is the future world constitution it is a proclamation to humanity it is the most positive book in the world it is a fountain of mercy and wisdom it's a warning to the heedless it's a guide to the erring it's an assurance to those in doubt it's a hope to those in despair and a solace to the suffering now i do agree with the questioner that every country has a constitution and if you analyze the constitution of almost all the non muslim countries they may not allow you to follow sharia completely there are few exceptions to the rule like india i'll come to it later on as far as the muslim countries are concerned many muslim countries claim not all some they claim that they follow quran and quran is the constitution but practically i don't know of any country in the world which follow quran completely some may follow a small percentage some may follow a larger percentage and there are many muslim countries who claim to be secular they claim to be democratic etc Now let us first deal with the non-Muslim countries. Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 97, that when the angel of death comes to take the soul, and he asks, how were you in the land? And when they reply, that we were subjugated and we were persecuted. So the angel replies, isn't the world of Allah big enough for you to migrate? So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah nisa chapter 4 verse 97 if you know nuzul al quran this was revealed in makkah when the majority of the people are makkah they were mushriks giving them guidance for the muslim to hijra and there was continues that all those is in the world big enough for you vast enough for you to migrate and all those who do not so the quran continues they will be going to hell and there was continues verse number 98 of surah nisa except those who are weak women men and children and who do not have the means to migrate so allah says if you are living amongst the kuffar amongst the non muslims allah tells you to migrate except if you are weak among the men women and children and you cannot migrate allah will forgive you so the ruling is you have to migrate you cannot stay in a country where majority are non muslims and the verse then continues and verse number 100 says that as for those who leave their home for sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if they die in a land away from their home for sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah will give them a felicity a greater reward they'll get jannah and there are various such verses so according to the ruling of the sharia a muslim is supposed to stay in a majority muslim country there may be exceptions and such exceptions one is india was india earlier was ruled by muslims for about 1000 years later on the britishers came and they made partition of the united india 
They made Pakistan, Bangladesh, India. About one third Muslim went to Pakistan, one third to Bangladesh, one third remained in India approximately. If you're united, you know, one third of the Muslim population lives in the Indian subcontinent. So the British just came and divided and unfortunately weakened the Muslim. But one thing good, mashallah, that India is one of the few non-Muslim countries in the world which has a Muslim personal law. That means every Muslim living in India has, as far as the personal law is concerned, whether it be inheritance, whether it be marriage, etc., they are allowed to follow the Sharia, allowed to follow Quran and say Hadith. The criminal law is, is, is common. The most important is the personal law. So India is one of the few countries in the world which allows a Muslim, even though it's a majority non-Muslim country, it was first ruled by Muslims, we have a Muslim personal law. So I wouldn't put India in this category of non-Muslim countries that a Muslim should migrate from. Because you know the Indian Muslims, they are about 210 million according to the government. Actually the numbers may be much more, 250 or 300 million, where will they go? So the ruling here I feel it doesn't apply and I've given this answer in my earlier. And India was one of the best or the best non-Muslim country to live before Modi came, before 2014. And Modi came and ruled and he won in the first election, then second election 2019 he won. So for 10 years he had absolute majority, you know. So because of that he tried to change many things. But Alhamdulillah in the recent election that took place a couple of months earlier, in the results were declared in June 2024, Modi didn't win with majority, he came back with the coalition, so we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the situation of Muslims in India becomes better. But even at that time, of course, we find that if you lived in those states which weren't controlled by BJP and RSS, like Kerala, like Hyderabad, like West Bengal, of course, Muslims were following very well, they were living very peacefully. And it's mentioned in the constitution of India that it, every citizen of India can preach propagate and practice his religion. Later on when Modi came, he tried to interfere with the constitution, he's trying, but Alhamdulillah now that he's no longer in the absolute majority, we pray that complete, the whole of India goes back to normal. But coming back to the other non-Muslim countries, whether it be the Western countries, whether it be USA, European countries, etc., where Muslims are in majority. So the ruling of the Quran, I told you, so I'm not in favor of Muslims living in non-Muslim countries. And basically coming to the question, the constitution. There are things in the constitution, like in India, there is not a single point in the constitution or a single rule in the constitution that forces any Muslim to do something which is haram or prevents them from doing something which is farda. But in most of the other non-Muslim country, of course, there are things that you may be doing haram or you may be forced to do haram. And one common thing now in most of the Western countries that they are forcing LGBT, lesbian, uh, gay, bisexual, transsexual, and plus, and queer, they're forcing. Now our children are being forced to learn about sex education, to know that, okay, there's no problem if you have two mothers, there's no problem if you have two fathers, we are being forced. Now this is haram. So if you live in a non-Muslim country, I do agree that many things of the constitution, People are living in the Western country. They are paying tax. And from the tax money, many innocent Muslims are being killed. With that tax money, America, for example, if you pay tax money to America, with that tax money, America is spending billions of dollars and giving aid to Israel to kill tens of thousands of Palestinians. And this is happening since decades. If in many European countries, whether it be UK, whether it be France, they are giving aid to Israel to kill innocent Muslims. Imagine with your tax money, if you are a citizen, part of your money is going and killing a Muslim brothers and sisters. And there are many things which either it's impossible or whether it's very difficult for Muslims to practice. I know, I mean, I've got many friends, you know, many of my Dai friends, etc. When we speak to them one to one, most of them agree that Dr. Zakir, you are right. It's not right for Muslims, but maybe asked in public, they may not be that vocal. Yes, there are some who yet consider a Western country to be a very good home for them, but the percentage is small. Majority agree. That's the reason many of the Dai that I know of, they want to migrate. Many want to come to Malaysia. And they say Malaysia is one of the best countries 
for a Muslim to live or the best of the worst or best available Muslim country to live. And you can see my answer on that. I've given that a couple of times before. I don't want to repeat it. So as far as following the constitution is concerned, in the Muslim country, as I said, that some Muslim countries claim that Quran is a constitution. Of course, they will not force you to something which is haram, but the government may do haram. I think there is no country that I know of in the world where there are no riba banks. Yes, I just heard that in Afghanistan they want to close riba banks. I don't know of any country in the world, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, which doesn't have riba banks. Now, riba is the twelfth major sin in Islam. Interest is the twelfth major sin. And a prophet said there are various levels of riba. And the lowest level is like doing zina with your mother. Imagine such a major sin, Imam al Dhabi labels it as twelfth major sin after the, the five pillars of that, after shirk and murder and black magic and the four pillars of salah, zakat, Ramadan, hajj, then obedience to your parents and take care of the orphans, etc. Then number twelve sin is dealing with rabbah, taking or giving rabbah, according to Imam al Dhabi. So unfortunately, unfortunately, even the Muslim country, I don't know of any country which is following Sharia totally. Some are following to a better extent, some medium, some very limited. But at least in the Muslim country, people will not force you to do something which is haram. So living in a Muslim country is much better than a non-Muslim country. They may tell you options of doing haram. They will not force you to do haram. They will not prevent you from doing something which is fart. So I don't know in any Muslim country where they will prevent you certain things okay, like and dawah is difficult. You know, many of the Muslim countries they prevent you from doing dawah. But as a whole, living in a Muslim country is better. Now coming to the question that if the constitution is not based on the Quran and the Hadith, so what should we follow? The answer is very clear cut. Whether living in a non-Muslim country or a Muslim country, if the constitution of the country tells you to do something which is against the Quran and say Hadith, no Muslim should follow it. Because for us, Allah and His Rasul is far superior to the constitution of any country. And if they force you to do something haram, you should not do it. Or if they prevent you to do something which is fard, then you should do it. So if the constitution of the country contradicts with the Sharia, the Quran and say Hadith, you should follow the Quran and the Sahih Hadith and not the Constitution. But if there are certain things which are optional in Islam and makes you compulsory by the Constitution, then no problem in doing it. Or something the Constitution prevents you from doing, which is allowed in Islam, muba, optional, no problem, as long as you do not break the rule of the Sharia. So for us Muslims, our constitution is the Sharia, the glorious Quran and the Say Hadith. So we should follow the constitution and agree with the verse of the Quran of Surah Maida chapter 5, verse number 45. We say that those who do not judge by the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be amongst the Zalimun, they will be amongst the wrongdoers. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He not make us amongst the Zalimun and may He make us stand for the truth, for the Haqq. And may he make us follow the Quran and say Hadith so that all the Muslims then enter, inshallah, Jannah. Hope that answers the question.